Hello, this is Xander. I'm going to be doing my budgeting expectations presentation. Uh, I figured that a video would be the best way to present all this info because uh, I can have access to all of my files that I have done for this class on my computer, uh, which makes me feel extra good about doing so much of my stuff on the same lesson. At first I thought that that would be an issue for the course that I was trying to use the same lesson plan for most of my assignments, but uh, in the end, I actually realized that for this assignment, it is coming together very well for that point. So looking at our budget exercise, uh, we're going through the three different groups. Uh, and so we're going to do the first one, uh, a classroom with only a teacher computer, no projector, and $200 in basic education program funds available for the whole year. So this is kind of a harder one, obviously, because with little means, you don't have a bunch of availability to do stuff. Um, I'm going to assume that the classroom has a whiteboard, which would be great to kind of write through some of the things that I had in my PowerPoint. Um, the PowerPoint would still be a useful tool that I could either do as a handout for the course, um, just making some assumptions based off of what I know. A black and white copy at ETSU costs 10 cents. So if we're going to have three classes for a high school teacher, that's going to be about $9 per lesson. So that means I can give about nine handouts throughout the semester, which would really boil down to like one every other week, which is not super uh, great. That sounds like a pretty low number, especially when I think back to some high school classes I had that were using um, a copy every single day. Uh, and the reason why it is, uh, why I was making that number based off of 100 instead of the 200 was because it said a year. So we'd be splitting that 200 into each semester. Um, so I think that this five paragraph essay speech handout I did was excellent for being able to give these students a material that they could use it for. Um, my lesson plan used a PowerPoint as a integral factor of it, but instead of using the PowerPoint to break down the lesson plan, uh, I think this actually is the older one now that I'm looking at it. Uh, it is, but I'll get that figured out while I'm talking. Um, oh wait, no, this is bright. Um, so whenever I'd be going through the PowerPoint, uh, either writing it down on the whiteboard, what I have built on there, or going through this paper, the students could have this paper in front of them to kind of see the way that the paper is driven. Uh, this concept map, I feel like, would be good with any level of uh, presentation that I'm doing here, and I would definitely use it even for the classrooms that had a, um, a ver uh, higher level of money that could be used within that classroom for the budgeting. So I definitely think that this piece that I use would be some of the best for this assignment because I could make copies of it for relatively cheap and be able to have a great resource for the students to use for that. Um, so for our second piece, it would be a classroom with an interactive display, smart board, Promethean board, etc., teacher computer, document camera, and the 200 annual allotment of BEP. So uh, with this, this would probably be the way that my uh, presentation was originally uh, thought to be for my lesson plan, where I would have a PowerPoint and some extra means that I could do. Uh, like I said, I still think this handout is excellent. Um, if I wanted to save some of that classroom money, I could uh, maybe email this out to the students at the high school level. Um, I see more and more high schools starting to use email more as a resource, or um, if the expectation at the school, depending is that they have a program like D2L or Canvas or something like that, I could then upload this graphic to that program and not have to worry about making copies of it or whatnot. But the PowerPoint would definitely be more of a tool for that class um, because I go through the similar things from the, um, from the concept map just with more detail. Um, I know that these are kind of wordy and might not necessarily, in my opinion, be the most optimal PowerPoint, but if you, the, I kind of wanted to build it in the way that if all the student has was the PowerPoint, they could still be successful, but also make it so I could use it in the classroom. So um, going through each of these different topics, there are examples, there are pictures that demonstrate stuff. Um, if I'd be doing this for a, uh, a real class in the future, which I most likely will be, uh, I would try to, instead of stating so much of this stuff explicitly, I would show a lot more examples um, of ways that I could do that. And also because I was doing this for the course, 
these uh, examples I did not make. So I could just take a paper that I wrote so that all of the examples are in the same unit uh, and then put those all together so that that would be a little bit more fluid for that. Um, and then lastly, this is the one I actually had the most trouble with, ironically enough, a classroom in a system with full one-to-one -one initiative. All students have a computer where the teacher also has access to an interactive display, document camera, and possibility of a district level grant to additional classroom technology and the 200 annual allotment for BEP. So this was something that I struggled with because I've not been in a lot of classrooms that have one-on-one -on -one technology. In my EDFN 2300, I was placed in a classroom of fourth graders that all had one-to-one -one technology. And it really blew my mind because um, I do see technology as a thing that can be used for the greater good of education, but uh, I don't know if I like it to be like everything that I do my technology off of. But uh, kids are learning so much more and more in technology that um, in a middle class to better than that school system, kids very well could have technology as a part of their classroom for a long time. So um, looking at all of this stuff, like I said, if the school has a D2L-like program, then these could be uploaded to it. Um, with the means that they said, maybe even like a video camera of certain lessons, or I could upload a video very similar to this, the students could go through and see what all they need to be doing for their paper so they could go back and reference it. But admittedly, I don't think a lot of this lesson specifically would change with all of those excess funds. Um, they may, if they have computers in their classroom, then they'd be able to type their papers on the computer in class which I think that, if I had to say something, would be the biggest way that this could change because instead of kind of making this assignment uh, an outside of the class activity due to means or time, this could be a unit within the classroom that isn't something that they have to take home. And we give a week to, um, like the first day, we talk about papers and topics, answer questions that they have. Second day, they choose which topic they want to do. And then for the rest of the week, we give them three days to work on their paper with the intent being that on Friday they could email it to the teacher and have that done. Or if it was a speech, then we could do speeches the following week. So um, with that being said, if all the students have the computer, then that seems like a great resource to have where they could have the PowerPoint available to them. Uh, if the teacher was helping another student, they could have the concept map uploaded in front of them. Um, another thing that I thought about was a Excel checklist. Um, I didn't pull up the interactive Excel spreadsheet that we did, but um, I could build something like that where it would be much more simple. It would be like a stepped checklist and it would say check, like you would just type in anything and it would say like you're done there. Um, and it would not necessarily be the most complex thing um, or even like, I don't even know if all students would use it, but for those that were very list oriented, like this might not work out for those that are list oriented. This might be, better for someone that's just kind of like doing the assignment as they go. Uh, whereas um, me or some other people, uh, I like knowing where I'm going to end up at the end of my assignment when I start my assignment. So I'm kind of thinking through every piece of it as I go. This might not work as well for them because if they're up here choosing their topic and then they're thinking about how they're going to cite their sources correctly as they're doing stuff like that, then that's going to be a struggle for uh, students who don't really like this method that they'll have to like go back, backtrack, do everything they need to do because their sources are up here in their step three, but in their step four and turning the essay in, this is down here. Whereas a checklist where they can see right in front of them on the computer, I need to do this, 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 and this uh, would definitely help them as something that they could do to improve. So overall, those are my thoughts for the budgeting exercise. Uh, I definitely think that uh, with the way that this lesson was presented, uh, it will definitely be able to be taught in all three of these different situations. Um, generally, essay writing is something that all schools are going to go through, um, be it at a uh, earlier level or a later level for like the high school time. Like this is a really relevant topic within the high school environment, being able to uh, publish work and write down your thoughts on a topic, either in a performative way or, or a persuasive way. And so I think that this assignment is built well to be able to be used um, outside of this. So thank you for the time to listen. I appreciate all this. And with that, uh, I wish you a nice holiday season. Thank you.